Hi everyone, this is a quick walkthrough, talk through of colour correction and colour balancing uh, using Final Cut Pro X. Basically, it's um, a follow up to uh, questions that were asked by Shrimpy and Dave in an earlier thread of uh, how to get the best out of Pro Tune. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, GoPro Pro Tune, then uh, this is uh, typical uh, of what you can expect. Basically, it's a raw file which means it's come straight from the camera sensor to the recording medium. It's not gone through any uh, inbuilt presets to give you a specific look. Now why would you want to use Pro Tune? Well basically um, it's a file mode that lets you decide the ultimate look of the picture. This uh, particular scene you can see it's uh, totally lacking in colour, contrast and everything else in between. But because it's lacking in those it means you can add those effects in to uh, the level that you want it to be. Maybe you want this particular scene to match in with a similar sh scene shot on a, um, a different camera or maybe at a different time of day and you want the colour balance to uh, be identical so it looks as though it was a, a follow-on not three or four hours later when the sun's gone down and it's getting a little bit warmer. Maybe you want to make this scene into something very filmic, very subtle or as uh, Shrimpy sort of indicated. He wants this to um, look like a bright, vibrant uh, spring day and um, full of uh, colour and full of contrast. Well, it's all possible. It's just a question of um, how you treat the subject matter. We better get a, a few things out of the way first and foremost. One, if you ask six people that colour grade video, how to colour grade video, then you will get six different answers. I'm not proposing that what I'm going to show you now is the perfect way of colour grading video. It's the way I use, it works for me, do with it what you will. I'm going to um, deliberately avoid theory, I'm going to deliberately avoid jargon. If you want to go into detail on those subjects then there's plenty of information on the web. Research it yourself, refine your own techniques to come up with something that works for you. But at least what we're going to look at today is a starting point. Secondly, Final Color Pro X is an Apple program. It only works on Macs. Don't bust a gut looking for a PC version. It doesn't exist. This is a piece of footage supplied by Shrimpy. It's a 2.7, I think it is, 2.7K Pro Tune from a GoPro. And having said that, it's going to be testing my Mac to its limits to do a screen recording and process um, such a high um, and uh, video file is going to make a little bit of stutter but as we're talking about colour rather than motion uh, you're just going to have to bear with it. No fancy editing on this particular I won't say tutorial, this walkthrough. I've segmented the, the clip. The first part is going to be ungraded, the middle part is going to be graded and the last is going to uh, be ungraded so you get a comparison either side of what uh, I've worked on in the middle. So let's get down to nitty gritty. Let's start by looking at what we've got to go at. As I say, this is a um, 2.7K, basically it's a landscape and a uh, bright sunny day in England, not Florida. We're going to try and make it look a little bit more like Florida. So, okay, let's start by looking at a representative frame for the scene and uh, this seems to uh, be pretty good. Let's just go back a couple of frames, I think that's slightly better. Okay, there we go. As you can see, we've got a little bit of white, not much in the way of black. We've got some blue skies and we've got some green grass and some bare trees. So where do we start? Now, just as when you mix sound, you really rely on a, a meter to uh, guide you as to uh, making sure that the signal that you're creating is uh, recordable. It's a uh, pretty same uh, thing with video. Uh, you need to check that the signal that you're actually working on is uh, recordable and playable on TVs and computers later on. So we need some sort of uh, video meter to uh, guide us in our quest. So we've got the scene selected, we've got the frame selected, we've got the inspector set up on the right hand side. I'm sure you know how to set your inspector up. But this is probably an area that you've uh, not looked at in any great detail. Choose video display options and let's show our video scopes. This is not the video scope that we want to start with. This is what they call a vector scope. We want to start with a waveform. So go to settings, select the waveform 
and if you look in the top left here, it says this is a Luma waveform, which is what we want because we're going to start by setting up exposure and this is exactly what this graph shows us. It shows us the exposure of this scene. As you can see on the right side, it's a little brighter and the waveform shows a signal more up to the 100% mark and on the left side it's a little darker and the signal comes down the waveform or towards zero. Now, key to remember, 100% is pure white. Anything that you push above that, the pixels will be burnt out, there'll be no detail left in them. Zero, zero percent is pure black. If you push the signal below zero, again, all the detail will be uh, lost, it'll be crushed into blacks, it'll be just pure black. The bit in the middle represents the bulk of the scene. So, let's start by correcting exposure. On the inspector we can see that colour and colour correction are the first options we have. Colour correction is already selected for us but it's not active so let's activate that and this brings up our colour adjustment uh, panel where we've got the colour board for making uh, changes to colour hue, colour saturation adding or subtracting the amount of colour and exposure. And in the exposure panel we've got whites or highlights, blacks and midtones. And then over on the left we've got a global selection. My first thing to adjust is the exposure of the main part of the scene that's going to be um, attracting the eye which in this case is not the car down here which is going to be fleeting me but it's going to be this area here, which is a mid-tone. How do you determine what are mid-tones and what are highlights and what are uh, lowlights? Well, we have to look to um, a photographer back in the 1900s by the name of Ansel Adams who uh, also faced similar problems when he was making fine art prints of his black and white photographs. He came up, after many years of research, with what's known as the Ansel Adams Zone System, which, believe it or not, actually works very good for video because he said that zero would be pure black and ten would be pure white. So if you regard it as zero pure black and a hundred pure white, we're not far off. If you look at the, uh, the Zone System, and there are plenty of uh, examples like this on the net, just download one, print it off, it will give you guidance for each type of scene and where it should be zoned. He suggests that a light foliage landscape, which this is, very light foliage landscape, should be zoned at about 5 or 50 percent. If we look at our vector scope we can see on the left this area is probably correctly exposed but as we go to the right of the shot he gets warmer and hotter and more overexposed which leads me to believe that the camera's been fooled a little bit on this instance and it's slightly overexposed to see. So I'm going to grab hold of the global adjust and bring it down to more like 50% which means it's a bit of a compromise because the left of the scene is now darker and we've still got some highlights on the right of the scene but by and large we've got it within the parameters of about 50% for most of the scene in the middle of the shot. So that's our uh, mid-tone sorted out which is what we're looking at a mid-tone scene. However if we look back at our highlights, we can see we've actually dragged those down a little bit. The clouds are just about white, but we want this scene to pop. Um, Shrimp has already said he really wants a, a good strong video pop into this. So the best way of doing that is increase the contrast. So let's go to the highlights or whites push them back up towards 100%. Bearing in mind anything that we push over 100% pixels burnt out. Now we don't have any blacks in this scene that we're going to uh, 
particularly go with, but we can see that the contrast is not really there. We do want to contrast the uh, scene to this. So let's go to the black control and let's bring this down by eye until we start getting a little bit of contrast in there. We don't want too much, we don't want these areas to go into pure black which is a danger of it as you see they're approaching very close to black and they're not blacks so that would be pushing the shadows in my book a little bit too much. It's all a balancing act so gentle movements and I think we're getting the exposure pretty much as we want it there. We're going to stay with the uh, waveform, but we're going to look at a different output now. Are we going to select? We are going to select a waveform with RGB Parade. Now we're looking at the lumens value of the red, green and blue channels of the video. And if we look at the highlights, we can see the highlights, we've got a slightly stronger red. If we look in the blacks, we can see the blue is slightly more dominant than the rest of it. So let's now go to our colour board. Let's select our highlights and we know we've got a little bit too much red in the highlights. So let's pull that down. Do the two automatically adjust until we get them balanced. And any colour cast that we add in the highlights has now disappeared. Let's look at the blacks and we need to give the blues a little bit of a boost so let's take the black control button and just increase them slightly and again subtle differences but any blue that we add in the shadows has now become more natural black so the highlights the blacks we sort out before we leave the uh, waveform, let's just go back to Luma because when we make a big adjustments we can also affect the overall exposure, but in this case we're pretty good. So we got the uh, tone sorted, we got the exposure sorted, but the saturation is pretty now. So let's go to saturation. And for this we're going to be guided by a different scope, the vector scope. Ignore the boxes around the outside. These are used for uh, setting up colour bars off TV cameras and uh, VT tape. That's how I'm showing my age now. But we're not going to be using that. This is the area that we're going to be interested in. This is a representative of this scene. And as you can see, it's leaning to the yellow and to the green because the subject is yellow and green. The main thing that we're going to use this for is getting the right uh, saturation. We can afford to push this to about 25 to 30 percent around the uh, the actual vector scope. We're in color saturation and we're going to make a global adjust. So we take the global control and we give that a push till we take it more out of that 25 percent. Maybe that's a little overdoing it. There we go. That's roughly 25-30% and we're automatically now starting to introduce some oomph into the scene. That's our first correction and we're going to uh, dispense with our scopes. And we're going to go back to the uh, inspector. And we get in there but it's not perfect. The grass looks very spring-like and brown and we really want it more of a summer grass to make it look vibrant. Correction 2. Now we're going to look at the grass for starters and only the grass so we're going to select add colour mask and with our eyedropper we're going to find a piece of grass that's representative and it says I'm going to adjust all these uh, pixels in this bit of green. Well let's just expand that out a little bit to grab a bit more of a wider range. And that should do nicely. And let's activate it. And let's start by adjusting the tone of that. It doesn't look much in the way of uh, summer grass. So we know it's a mid tone. Let's grab the mid tone controller, pull it over into the greens, and start. 
are looking for a summer green. Well, that looks more like a summer green to me. Fresh new grass. And let's go over to saturation. And we only want to adjust those mid tones. So let's just increase the saturation just a little bit, not too much. We want it to pop, but we don't want it to look unreal. It's looking a little bit unreal down here to me. So let's just ease that back. Just a little extra and I'm gonna live with that right let's go back to our inspector again and let's have a look at those uh, blue skies and a little bit of reflection in the water so let's add another correction click on the add correction coming up with correction 3 and again we're going to add a color mask with the eyedropper Try and find something that's a little bit blue. Um, yeah, again, let's just push it out a, a bit to uh, take in more of a broad spectrum of the sky. And let's activate that again. So, back over to our tone. And uh, if you go back to the Ansel Adams zone system, he will tell you that blue sky again is a mid tone. So, select the mids, and we need to find the blue which suggests more of a summer sky than a spring one. Well, you can tweak around till the cows go home, but for the purpose of this, that's going to work for me. And again, saturation. We only want this mid-tone blue to be uh, increased, so let's grab that. Can afford to push that quite considerably to get that blue there. Now as you're making these adjustments guess what your eyes going to compensate so basically you're going to do it you're going to have a look how it was you're going to take it off look how it used to be and then you're going to go back and tweak but you really don't want to watch me doing this for too long let's go back to our inspector and you know what I'm more or less going to leave it at that one last thing, sharpness. It doesn't really look very sharp. It's a little bit dead. And uh, if we come to uh, the effects and select blur, would you believe? Down at the bottom, you've got a sharpness filter. So let's grab the sharpness filter and pull it over the bit that we want to be adjusted. Inspector again, it comes up sharpness 2.5. Do you know what? From experimentation, I usually find about 3.5 will do nicely on this subject. And there we go. I'm going to leave that to render through now, and then we're going to play the before and after. Okay, the scene's finally rendered through. Let's have a look at our before and after. So here we go. Well, it might not be Florida on a summer's day, but uh, eminently more watchable than the uh, straight out of the camera raw. And uh, you'll find the more that you experiment and work with uh, ProTune, then uh, the faster you become at getting the uh, shots to your uh, liking and your style. Have fun.